Hello. So I'm continuing my uh, videos on games that I own but I've only played once. Next up is Ventura. Played this in 2015 with uh, my son and uh, one of my friends. Again, as usual, having not played it in so long, I don't remember a whole lot about it. Um, I think I remember my son saying he liked it pretty well. Other than that, I don't I don't remember very much. I remember seeing it in a lot of Fantasy Flight sales for uh, pretty cheap, twenty five dollars or maybe even fifteen ten dollars there at the end. Um, so I probably got it on one of those sales. Um, again, since I haven't played it since twenty fifteen, I'm not sure that I uh, thought too much of it, but. Um, you never know. Sometimes I just forget about it. So I did go ahead and just recently play this today. And uh, I'll go through a setup, how to play, and I'll tell you my thoughts on it. All right. The rules say with the player with um, the person with the most money in their pocket takes the first player card or just choose randomly. Okay, starting with the first player, um, they'll choose what family they want to be. There's four possible players, blue, red, yellow, and black. Each one corresponds to a family. And those families can be seen here. So I think it's blue, red, yellow, and black. And in the back of the rule book here, it gives a little history on them. But anyway, as I said, starting with the first player, they'll choose what, basically what color they want to be. Um, and you take your player mat, your associated tokens, um, starting city tile, army, or company and army markers, um, and your scoring marker. So I've done that for my red and yellow player. I'm going to play a three player game. Then you'll gather the territory tiles that you're going to use in the game. Um, some of them, are they all have a little number here. So if you're only playing a uh, three-player game, then you'll take out. You would take out all the tiles that have a four in them in a three-player game. And of course, if you're playing a two-player game, then you'd take out all the tiles except for the ones and twos, etc. Okay, all the remaining tiles that will be used are mixed and uh, create a stack, territory stack. Then each player will draw four uh, tiles from the stack. So let me do that. And the uh, conscription cards with the green backs are shuffled and placed near the territory stack. Then the Ventura deck is shuffled, um, that's the cards with the blue back, and then the top three cards are revealed. Then you'll put the Florins, which is the currency in the game, and the wound tokens just in a stockpile within reach of everybody. Then the two papal territories, which have this icon on, on them, are placed in the center of the play area, which is where you'll build your map around. Then starting with the first player, he'll take one of the territories he drew and place it um, on the map. It has to be at least adjacent to two other territories. So you now this guy could place this one here. And the second player would take one of his um, territories and again you just have to place it within um, where it's touching at least two other territories so he could put this one here and third player takes his maybe he puts one here back to the first player so you do this to go through all all the tiles taking turns until you've placed all four of the tiles that you uh, initially drew so let me finish doing that 
Okay, so all players have placed their uh, four territory tiles, and this is how the map ended up. Then starting with the first player, he'll place his city tile. Again, it has to be adjacent to at least two other tiles. And then he claims that with one of his domain markers. And then he has to claim uh, three other territories. And they all must be adjacent to one of his other uh, domain markers. So let's just say uh, blue chooses these. And then the second player will say he puts his city here, puts a domain marker there, and then maybe he'll take uh, these three. And finally the third player. Um, now the only thing is you can't put your city tile adjacent to another city tile. So let's say he wants to come over here. So then he'll put, uh, and he'll take that one, that one, that one, and that. Now the number of uh, domain markers you put on a territory is equal to the income generated by that territory. So blue does have one on each of his and each of his territories just generate one income so he's good there but yellow he's got this territory which generates one income plus an additional income for each um, wood green colored territory that's adjacent to it if you have a domain marker so this one will actually produce an additional income, so he should get an additional domain marker in there. And then red, this one produces two income, so he should actually have an additional domain marker there. And this one can produce an additional income for an adjacent um, green territory, but he doesn't have a domain marker here so he doesn't get that bonus yet. If he ever puts one here, then um, this one will then generate two and he'll get to put an additional domain marker there. Then each player will take his garrison card, which they're in the color of your uh, player, and places it in the number one, next to the number one slot of the player board, and then takes his number one company figure. Oh, that's my number five. Um, the number one corresponds to this number one company figure. Company figure is this like knight with a shield and you put that in your um, starting city. So this garrison is represented by this company figure and you'll see that the garrison is a company. So that goes in his city. And we do the same for player two. This is his number one company marker. So we put that in his city. And finally, we do the same for red, if I can find his number one. These numbers on these uh, company markers and army markers are pretty hard to see. So you may want to take a marker or something to color that in. I'm thinking of doing that myself. But anyway, put his garrison card on the number one, and then that goes in his city. Then you take your starting florins or coins. The first player gets none. The second player gets one coin. Um, and then the third player gets two. And of course, if there was a fourth player, they would get uh, three. But I'm only playing a three player game. Then each player places his scoring marker on the zero space of the scoring track. And then you just set these two battle boards aside for future use. And that's it. We're all set up and ready to play. All right. So how do you play? Well, these player aids um, kind of show you that there's different phases. The On these player aids, they're just labeled A, B, C, D, E. And then each phase is um, contains several steps, which you can see here. 
the A phase is actually called the Ventura phase and it uh, contains the initiative step, prestige step, fortune step, recruit step, and uh, recovery step. So let's go ahead um, and see what those are and that's what you do first is the Ventura phase. So the first step in the Ventura phase is the initiative step and that's basically determining first player. So in the first round of the game you've already chosen first player um, so there's pretty much nothing you do but in subsequent rounds then whoever um, is lowest on the scoring track here they would take the first player card um, if there is a tie for lowest score on the scoring track then it would be whoever has the least amount of florins or money and then whoever receives the first player card um, also gets to score one victory point now again in the first round of the game um, the first player does not um, get to score a victory point so but in subsequent rounds they would so that's the initiative step okay the next step um, in the Ventura phase is the prestige step and uh, basically there you can pay florins to get victory points so you can pay one florin for one victory point two florins for two victory points uh, four florins for or uh, four victory points for three florins five victory points for four florins and seven victory points for five florins and that's the most you can buy and you do that in turn order so if, you know the first player gets to decide whether they want to purchase victory points first then second player and then third player and then additionally uh, any player who controls one of these papal territories if you have a domain marker in one of these papal territories um, you get two victory points for that okay the next step in the Ventura phase is the uh, fortune step and basically you decide whether you want to draw a tile from the stack of tiles here or if you want to draw one of these um, three revealed if you want to take one of these three revealed Ventura cards into your hand if you take one of these into your hand then you flip over the next one so the next player will have a choice of three and then of course if they take one then they flip over. So every player has the choice of either taking one of three uh, Ventura cards into their hand or taking a tile and um, there is a hand limit of five cards um, so if you ever go over five you have to discard one. Okay, the next step in the Ventura phase is the recruit step, and that is just basically, you know, in the previous step you got to draw one of these cards that are revealed for free. In the recruit step, you can buy one of these Ventura cards off of the top of the deck for two florins. Well, you can buy as many as you want um, for two florins each, but you draw them from the deck. And the Ventura cards are are um, either basically companies which are your armies or captains of fortune which are your sort of your leaders of your armies that give you bonuses but we'll go over more of that later and the last step in the Ventura phase is the uh, recovery step and that's if uh, some of your companies have wound markers you get to remove one wound marker for free for each company you have that's in an inhabited area which is one of these tiles with a gray uh, border and it has to be uh, a tile that's in your do domain but it has to be a gray border in your domain if you have a wounded company in there then you get to remove one uh, wound token for free from that company 
Okay, then you go into the administration phase, which is just composed of two steps. And again, um, you do these steps in turn order. So, um, you know, the first player would do step one, and then the second player, and then the third player, and then the first player would do step two, um, then the second player, and the third player. And that's the same for all these phases. You do each step. Each player gets to take their turn doing that step before you go to the next step. Just wasn't sure if I had made that clear earlier. So the first part of the administration phase is the annex step. And what you do in that, if any of your troop markers, which are these or the, uh, uh, that's a company marker, this is a uh, army marker, but if one of those they're both considered a troop. Um, if one of those is in a territory that does not contain a domain marker in it, then you get to put one of your domain markers there. Um, you know, so if this guy was here, he would get to put a domain marker there um, or a number of domain markers depending on the income of that territory. So this territory gets um, generates two income so you would put two domain markers there um, so basically wherever one of your troops or armies is if there is not a domain marker there you get to put domain markers there you know dependent upon the income level if your troop is in uh, a territory with an opponent's domain markers then you get to discard those domain markers, scoring one victory point for each domain marker in that territory. And then you add your own uh, domain markers there, depending on the income level. Okay, then the next step um, in the administration phase is the upkeep step. And for that, you'll basically add up the income generated by all the territories of yours that have domain markers. And the easiest way to do that is just count your domain markers because um, they should equal the same as the income generated by those territories. So, for instance, here, um, one, two, three, four, you would generate four um, florins or coins. But then you have to subtract any maintenance cost of armies you have which is in the lower right hand corner um, so at the start of the game you just have this garrison so uh, you have a maintenance cost of one but as you add more troops um, each company and uh, captain of fortune will have uh, maintenance costs as you can see so in this step uh, that keep step you uh, total your income, subtract your maintenance costs, and then if there's anything left over, then you get that in florins. And if your income isn't enough to cover your maintenance costs, then you can pay it out of any money you have, um, you know, in your treasury or whatever. If you don't have enough, if you still don't have enough to pay the maintenance costs, then you'll have to discard companies or captains of fortune um, until you can pay the costs all right the next phase is the expansion phase if you had any tiles in your hand that you had taken uh, during the fortune step you can add one tile to the game board um, you must place it uh, where it's at least adjacent to you know two other tiles and it has to be adjacent to one of your uh, tiles that has one of your domain markers and then you go ahead and add domain marker uh, one of your domain markers to it or more depending on its income level so that's basically adding a new another territory to your domain onto the board so each player <clears throat> will you know in turn order get to do that if they had any tiles you only get to do one. If you've got more than one tile on your hand, you still, in the expansion step, only get to add one tile. Okay, the next phase is the conscription phase. And uh, that basically is 
players in turn order get to purchase conscription cards which are uh, normally um, companies but they're you know <clears throat> less effective in battle or they might be events that you can play in certain phases and they cost one floor in each um, you know you can buy as many as you can pay for again but your hand limit is five cards so <clears throat> if you get more than five cards in your hand you have to discard okay the next phase is the mobilization phase and the first step of that mobilization phase is the deploy step so in the deploy step is where you will um, deploy new company cards or and or captain of fortune cards that you have into your hand um, into your troop areas which are these uh, areas down here and onto the board so uh, for example <clears throat> a company card can be deployed uh, into an empty troop area and and if it's deployed by itself into a uh, empty troop area then it must be deployed into your city so if you um, and when you um, deploy a, a company you have to pay the deployment cost so say I had this card in my hand and I wanted to deploy this company I'd have to pay one florin and then this is uh, company two or troop two more accurately troop two so then I would find the number two um, company marker and it would have to be when it's deployed by itself it would have to be deployed into my city so then I would put this troop two or company two marker into my city so again company one is my garrison and now company two is uh, these swordsmen so a company can be deployed into an empty troop area or it can be deployed into a uh, troop that contains a captain of fortune and at least one other company so captains of fortunes can only to be deployed into the city and they have to be deployed um, where there's at least one company so um, since I have this company deployed here if I had a captain of fortune um, which is one of these which are basically like I said a leader I could then deploy him into this troop area because it already contains um, it already contains a company and it's in um, my city so a captain of fortune must be deployed into the city and it must be deployed with a troop um, that already contains a company card and once you have a captain of fortune um, with a company then you replace the company marker with an army the corresponding army marker so since this is company two I would find my company two marker and replace it with my uh, company two army marker so a captain of fortune with a company becomes an army now you can later add more companies to a troop with a, a captain of fortune even if later this uh, this army was out in another territory if I was in the um, the deploy step I could play another company card to this um, troop but I couldn't play another captain of fortune card again a captain of fortune card can only be deployed in a city and to where a, uh, a troop that already has at least one company you can't have two captain of fortunes in the same troop and again a company card you can deploy a company card into an empty troop but it must be in the city 
and then later you can add a captain of fortune or um, that company can end up moving out on its own but then you wouldn't be able to add a captain of fortune to it because it would not be in the city so <laughs> that's a little confusing but we'll get uh, when we're doing the example play we'll get more into that and the next step of this phase is the regroup step and that is if you have two companies or an, or two armies or an army and a company in the same territory you can you can exchange uh, basically companies between troops or you can exchange your captains of fortunes between troops um, take or just take one company from one troop and add it to the other um, troop that you have in the same territory so it just lets you um, move companies between or swap captain of fortune between armies um, that are in the same territory and then finally you go to the troop phase and that is where you can move your um, troops around the board so your garrison always has to stay that you start with always has to stay in your city but uh, you know for instance you had uh, company two, uh, troop two here on the board um, it has a movement of three so you know if you're here each tile that you're going to move to shows a movement value of how much it costs to move in there so it costs two movement to move um, into this tile so because this company two has a movement of three he can move into this tile which takes two of his movement now his movement is three so he still has one movement left this tile only takes one movement so he could still move again into this territory now if you have um, an army you know, say you have your captain of fortune um, leading this company then um, you'll see he gives a bonus of plus two movement so then this troop would actually be able to move um, five movement total so you know he can move here two three and then he would still have two more he could move now it may be you may have some other company in here in your troop that has a movement of less than three so you always have to go with the lowest the company that has the least movement um, that's the most you you can move plus your bonus of your uh, captain of fortune so if I had another company in here whose movement was only two then I would add uh, I can only move two plus my captain of fortunes uh, bonus so I could move four if I had a unit in my troop that movement was only one so I had a one a three and my thing and my captain of fortune then I could only move one plus my captain of fortunes bonus of two so I could only move um, three a total of three movement costs and if you ever move your uh, army or company into a territory that contains an opponent's uh, army or company then a battle must be fought immediately so when you're going to fight a battle each uh, player will take each player in the battle will take one of these battle boards and put it over their uh, player mat we'll just say you know like so and then what you'll do is you'll take your if you have a captain of fortune he'll go in this space and then you will place your whatever armies that are whatever uh, companies are in the troop that are uh, in the territory that are involved in the battle you'll decide which order you want them to participate in the battle so you'll start with one two and then three four five in the first um, round of the battle um, the first assault 
only the companies in the one and two spot will be involved. And the first assault is going to be a ranged um, assault. So you would want, if you had more, um, if you had some companies that had ranged, those are the ones that you'd want to put up there. In this instance, um, in this example, uh, this player doesn't have any uh, ranged um, uh, company, so he'll kind of be in a pickle. But first, you, each player will place which cards they're going to use face down. If you had more, they would go here. On this example, we'll say the red player, he's got, you know, he'll put his Captain of Fortune there. And then he's got these. Um, so he would put, he would want to put uh, these that have ranged abilities up top in spaces one and two. And every, like I said, you put them face down, then once both players say they're ready, then you reveal what you're, what you've chosen. And we'll just say the battle is taking place here. Red's moved into blue's territory, so the battle is taking place here. So again, the first assault is a ranged assault, and you only use the cards that are in these top spaces. If you had others placed down here, they won't come into play. So what you do is add up your ranged values. He has zero, he has zero, but the Captain of Fortune has plus one, so that gives these guys a total of one. But if the battle is taking place in your territory, you'll also get whatever bonuses are on the territory. So um, since this is taking place in Blue's territory, he gets plus one. So that gives him a total of two ranged attack. And uh, let's see, the red has three, four, and no bonus here. So he has a total of four. So you apply the damage against the first card um, here first. So he had a total of two. Like this guy has a defense of three. So he would get two wound markers. If blue's total had been more than three, then this guy would um, be removed, killed, and any additional... Um, range damage that could still be applied would be applied to this card. Any, if, if he had enough where he could wipe out that card too, then the excess is just not used. It's not applied down to the, to the next card at this time. But he only had enough to do two damage, um, so he didn't even have enough to wipe out this card. Now, now again, this guy had a total of uh, four so you apply that damage. So that will, that is enough to take out his spearman with one left over. So then the swordsman would get one uh, wound marker on it. So we would apply that. Now I didn't mention that this territory actually gives a plus one resistance value which can be added, and if your uh, Captain of Fortune had a resistance value, that could be added also. He didn't. Um, this territory does have plus one, so he could have added it, used it now, and made a four, but because this guy had a total of uh, four damage, it still would have ended up killing this guy. So this resistance value is still a being available to be used this battle. A resistance value... Um, bonus from a tile or Captain of Fortune can only be used once in the entire battle. So um, I still have it available for the next round of um, battle here. So now in the second assault, um, we're using melee values. So this guy's dead, so he doesn't count. Um, so I have a melee value of three no bonus from my uh, Captain of Fortune, and no bonus from my Territory. So three total melee against. This guy has zero, 
plus one from his captain of fortune, so that's one plus one. So he has two. So two melee against three. So we'll apply his three damage. Well, first one will go here to kill this guy, leaving uh, two left over, which will just put two wounds on this guy. And uh, he had a total of two melee, which I can use my bonus resistance value to knock that down to one melee. So uh, I would take one wound, and I still have two resistance left here. So after the second assault, if both uh, armies still have units left, these two were destroyed, um, then um, you can do, one side can retreat or you can do additional assaults. So first the attacker has the uh, option to retreat into an adjacent territory that belongs to his domain. So in this case, if this guy was the attacker and he, would, he had moved all the way over here, he can't retreat um, because there's not an adjacent territory that belongs to his domain. But um, first the attacker has the opportunity to retreat, then the defender has the opportunity to retreat. If neither one retreats, um, then we do another um, assault. If one does retreat, then um, the other player wins the battle. But in this case, uh, let's just say this guy, he can't retreat. Um, this player doesn't want to retreat. So you would do another round. And, and um, so in this case, we would do another round. This guy has no more cards that he can move up since uh, that guy was killed. But this guy actually, um, since this guy was killed, he moves over. And now because he has additional cards, he can move up. They move up, and now they will take place in the battle. All additional assaults after the first assault are melee. So in this case now, uh, this guy would have four five, six total melee against three. So this guy would do three damage, which would end up, uh, this guy can take one more, leaving two damage on this guy, but he would be killed. And then this guy, again, we said had six damage, which would just um, kill this guy. Now when uh, all the companies, uh, um, that are with a captain of fortune are killed then the captain of fortune is removed also and they're removed from the game they're not put in the discard pile um, so at the end of the battle um, such as this case you know blue was defeated if you defeated an army not a company then you get five victory points and then if the battle took place in a, a territory um, with an opponent's domain marker, if they no longer have uh, any armies in there, um, then that domain marker is removed and you score points equal to the number of domain markers removed. So in this case, one would be removed. You'd score an additional victory point. And that's pretty much how the game goes. Um, to win the game, you either get 30. When a player reaches 30 victory points, they immediately win the game. Or if you uh, capture an enemy city, if you end up putting a domain marker during the annex step of... Um, well, during the annex step, um, you know an opponent's city then you automatically win the game so when a player's uh, city is defeated you know um, they're automatically out of the game and then the next round if you still have uh, troops in there and you get to place one of your domain markers during the annex step then you win if you've been forced out of there before that then you may not autom automatically win but that player is removed from the game um, when you defeat his city.
And when you defeat his city, he must remove all domain markers on the board since he's out of the game, and you score points uh, for each of those domain markers that are removed. And anyway, that's uh, how you play Ventura. So why don't we just go through, I'm going to set back up um, beginning of the game, and we'll go through a few sample turns. Okay, so starting with the first player, we do the initiative uh, step, but uh, since it's the first round of the game, you know, it would go to the player with the lowest score, um, but we've already determined the first round. Um, first player keeps the card and does not get the uh, victory point that would normally be given. Okay, now we go on to the prestige step where you can pay uh, florins to get victory points. First player doesn't have any florins, so he's not going to do it. Uh, second player only has one florin, so he doesn't want to do it. And third player with only two florins, um, he also does not want to spend any money for victory points at this time. Now also in the pre prestige step, any player that has a domain in one of these papal tiles um, gets two victory points. So the first player, blue, will get two victory points. Okay, next is the fortune step. Uh, in turn order, players decide whether they want to draw a tile or take one of these Ventura cards. So, I think we'll say the first player, blue player, he wants to, uh, he'll take these swordsmen. And so that just goes into his hand. I'll put his hand up here. Um, second player, yellow. Oh. I forgot, got to flip one of these back over. Yellow decides uh, he'll take this uh, Colleone uh, Captain of Fortune and add that to his hand. So we'll just put his hand cards right here. And we got to flip one back over. And just to do something different, we'll say that the uh, third player, red player, is going to draw a tile. So he just keeps that in his play area at this time. Okay, next step is the recruit step where each player in can turn order can decide whether they want to buy some Ventura cards for two florins each. Again, nobody really has a lot of money, so they're all going to pass on that at this time. And next is the recovery step where you would possibly be able to heal wounds, but as there's been no battles, uh, nobody's going to do that. So now we move on to the next phase. First step of that phase was the annex step, where if somebody had moved and they were had uh, an army or something in a territory, um, they could put a domain marker there. But as this is the beginning of the game, nobody's done that, so really nothing's going to happen in this annex step. So next is the uh, upkeep is where you'll get your income so basically you just count your domain markers one two three four for blue so he'll get an income of four minus the one uh, maintenance cost of his garrison so he'll get three florins so we'll just put his money right there second player actually has one two three four five remember because he gets that bonus income for having this green tile so he gets five florin minus his one up maintenance cost of his garrison so he gets four so one two three four and we'll just put that with his money and then finally the third player has one two three four five also minus one for his maintenance of his garrison which gives him four also so one two three four all right. All right. Now we go into the expansion phase. So each player in turn order can add a territory tile from their reserve to the game board. And remember, the only one that has one is the third player who drew <clears throat> this tile in the fortune step. So he can add that. It has to be adjacent to two other tiles and adjacent to a territory um, where he has a domain marker. So. 
let's just say he wants to add this uh, here and the reason why <clears throat> is because now he gets to add a domain marker to that Oops. and because of this um, his income here increases to two because he's got a, dom a green um, woodland tile adjacent to this so now he gets to put an extra domain marker uh, on this tile okay next we go to the conscription phase where players can decide to purchase conscription cards um, as many as they want for one apiece up to their hand limit um, blue player he's not going to purchase any We'll say second player yellow, he's going to purchase one. So he'll get this, and it's got this event. So in the troop step, if your army enters a territory without an opponent's troop, that territory becomes part of your domain. So he can just play this in the troop step if this is true, and uh, so that happens. So that goes into his hand. So now he's got two cards in his hand, so he can only have three more. And the third player says he's going to buy a conscription card also. So he draws one. Let's see what he got. Another event. In battle involving your army, before the first assault, you may pay four florins to remove the opponent's captain of fortune. So that might be good. Um, now... He could buy another card if he wanted to, since he's got, you know, five money. But eh, he's not going to do that right now. All right, so we go to the next phase, which is the mobilization phase, <clears throat> and the first is the deploy step. So this is where you can deploy your companies and captains of fortune. So I remember the blue player bought this or uh, got this swordsman. So um, he could add that to his garrison if he wanted to. <clears throat> well, no, he couldn't because a company card can only be deployed into an empty troop area or into a uh, um, troop area that contains a uh, captain of fortune. And he probably wouldn't want to put it there anyway because the... Uh, garrison whoever's in that garrison can't move so he's gonna deploy this into a new company <clears throat> troop two i mean into a new troop troop two cost one to deploy it so i'll take his one coin so now we get the two company marker to match to match troop two and that can only be deployed into the city, so we put that into his city. And that's the only card he has, so he's done. Now the second player, um, he doesn't have any company card to play. The only thing he has is this Captain of Fortune. And a Captain of Fortune has to be played in a city, and it has to be played... Um, into a troop with another company card so he could play this with his garrison but then that uh, captain fortune would have to stay with that garrison and could never move out because the garrison must always stay in the city so he decides he's not going to play this at this time he wants to wait till he gets um, some other companies in a troop he can move and then add this captain of fortune so he's not going to do anything uh, in the deploy step and um, of course, third player, he chose to get a tile instead of drawing a card. And he didn't draw, uh, when he did purchase a conscription card, it was not a company. So he doesn't have anything he can play in the deploy step. Next is the regroup step. And that's where I mentioned if you had uh, armies or companies out um, on tiles in the same tile territory you could exchange companies between armies and whatnot but of course that doesn't uh, matter at this point because nobody's got any armies out there and last is now the troop phase 
so that's where you can move your army so um, if the first player wanted to he's got this company with just one swordsman uh, company in it. He's got this troop with one swordsman company in it that can move up to three. So he could take that and move to either this space or this space. But um, he wouldn't then later be able to add, because it would be out of the city, he wouldn't be able to add any more companies or, any more, or a captain of fortune. So he's probably going to wait and not move out until he gets a captain of fortune and maybe another couple companies in there. So he's not too weak. And nobody else has uh, any companies they can move. Everybody else just has their garrisons, which can't move. So nobody's going to move in the troop phase, and that ends the round. Okay, so we go to the next round, the Ventura phase. First is the initiative step. And whoever is lower on the uh, score, which red and yellow are tied so the tiebreaker is um, whoever has the least florins so red has uh, five florins and yellow has four so he wins that so he'll be the first player and he gets one victory point okay Okay, next we go to the prestige step where you can pay for some victory points. Um, first player, yellow, uh, decides he doesn't want to pay anything. Red says, yeah, you know what, I'll go ahead and pay for one, uh, one victory point. So one victory, one florin pays for one victory point. So that puts him up there tied with uh, yellow. And blue player with only two florins says now I'm going to pass there but then again the uh, in the prestige step whoever has a domain marker in one of these papal territories gets two victory points so blue gets another two so you know they probably want to kick him out of there so that he doesn't get two victory points every round okay now we go to the fortune step where they can decide to draw a tile or one of these three cards so uh, yellow says he's gonna take uh, he's gonna take the spearman yeah he will take the spearman and add him to his hand so now he's got three cards in his hand he can have two more but that's what he's gonna do uh, red players next um, he thinks he'll take this heavy cavalry and he'll add that to his hand and we replace the card and blue would have liked to got a captain of fortune one didn't come up there so he's not going to take one of these cards he decides he's going to get a tile instead so blue takes a tile all right, now we go to the recruit step where for two florins you can purchase, uh, two florins each, you can purchase Ventura cards. Uh, yellow says he's not going to buy any. Red says he's not. But blue, he's going to take a chance. He really wants to get a Captain of Fortune. So even though he's low on money, um, he's going to pay two florins. And he's going to draw and hope it's a Captain of Fortune. But it's not. Anyway, he adds that card to his hand. And now we have the recovery step, but nobody has any wounds to worry about. So we move on to the next phase. And that is the administration phase. If anybody, the annex step, if somebody had an army out you know, where they could put a domain marker, they would do so now. But that hasn't happened at this point. So we go to the next step, and that's the upkeep step. So again, we'll count our domain markers, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so he gets five minus his upkeep of one, so four florins. He'll just put one back and get a five. And on to red, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minus the one so he gets six 
So there's his six florins. And then uh, blue has one, two, three, four. Minus his maintenance cost of two, three. So he only gets one florin. Okay, next is the expansion phase. Well, the only one that has a tile to add is the blue player. He's got this one. He gets a bonus income if it's next to a gray tile. So he's going to put that there. And he puts one of his domain markers on there. Well, I, actually he'll put two domain markers on there because it's worth one plus, like I said, uh, one for the gray tile next to it. So that's got an income of two now, so he places two domain markers. Alright, next is the conscription phase. Yellow says, yeah, I'll buy, let me buy a card. Uh, what do I get? He got a company, Drifters. But they can only be mobilized in a wood, river, or lake territory. So, uh, wood is green, uh, river is blue, and we don't have a lake territory, but it's blue, but has like a lake in the middle. So, they can only be added to a troop that is in one of those uh, type of tiles, so that's no good to him right now. Now, he's got four cards. He could buy another, but he thinks he's not going to. Red says, yeah, he's going to buy a card. So he draws one, sees what he's got. Another event in the troop phase and a battle by an army. The second assault is a ranged assault instead of a melee. So again, he can play that um, if he's in a battle. And finally, blue. He's only got one coin, so he is not going to purchase one. All right, next is the mobilization phase. So... Hello decides he's going to mobilize, he's going to deploy, the first step is deploy, so he's going to pay two to deploy the spearman into troop two. So here's his two. And then he's going to also deploy his captain of fortune uh, with those spearmen, so he's going to pay another two, gets three back. And so now he's got an army. So instead of putting the uh, Troop 2 company marker, he's going to put the Troop 2 army marker, which is the one with the horse head. And again, that has to be deployed in his city right now. And that's all he really has he could deploy right now. All right, Let's see what Red's going to do. All right, red player, he's going to deploy this heavy cavalry, costing three to deploy it. So he'll do that. And that's a company. He doesn't have a uh, captain of fortune to play at this time, so he puts company two marker. And again, that has to be deployed uh, in a city at this time, so this goes into his city here and that is all that he has that he can deploy and blue just has this other swordsman which he couldn't uh, deploy with this troop because you can't deploy a company on a company unless it has a uh, captain of fortune he could create another troop with this swordsman, but it would cost him his last uh, florin to do that, so he thinks he's going to wait a turn or so. All right, next would be the regroup step again. If you have two armies in the same territory, you could exchange companies and captain of heroes and such between them, but in that case uh, isn't happening right now, so finally we go to the last phase, the troop phase. Of course, yellow's first, so he can, he thinks he's going to go ahead and move move out uh, with his Captain of Fortune and his Spearmen. So his uh, Spearmen have a movement of three, 
and a bonus from his Captain of Fortune, so a movement of five. So he can move here for two, uh, here for another one, three. And he wants to go here so he can get this papal territory probably, so four. So he's going to stop there. All right, red doesn't want to move. Uh, he doesn't think with just his heavy cavalry company. And blue does not want to move with just his swordsman company. So that's going to end the round. All right, we'll do one more round. And if I don't get into a battle, then I'll just skip ahead <clears throat> until we do get into a battle. All right, first is the Vengera phase initiative step. So the person with the least amount of points that's tied between yellow and red. And then so it goes to whoever has the least money. Red has six and yellow has three. So yellow will maintain um, first player and gets a point. Okay, next is prestige step where you can buy victory points. Um, yellow with only three florins doesn't want to, but red with one with six florins says yes, he's going to spend one to buy one victory point. And blue with only one coin says no, I'm not going to. Of course, blue um, in this step does get his two victory points for this papal territory. That puts him at six. Okay, now we go to the fortune step where you decide if you want uh, an Ventura card or a tile. And yellow, he thinks he's going to take, uh, what has he got here? Spearman. He's going to take this crossbowman. Okay. Red needs a captain of fortune, so he's going to take old Dal Verme here. Put that into his hand. And um, blue, he also wants a captain of fortune. So he'll take Francesco Sforza. Alright, so he's done that. Okay, now we're at the recruit step. If anyone's, anybody wants to pay two florins to buy Ventura cards, they can do so, but everybody's going to pass on that. Then the recovery step, but nobody has any wounds, so we don't have to worry about that. And we go to the next phase. So first step is the annex step, and we do have yellow is in a territory without a domain marker, so he does get to annex that. So he will put domain markers equal to the income on that territory, and now that's part of his domain. All right, next is the upkeep step. So he counts his markers, one, two, three, four, five, six. So he'll get six, but he's got to pay one, two, three, four. So he only gets two. So he gets two florins. Red has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but he's got to pay two, three, so he gets four. One, two, three, four. And blue has one, two, three, four, five, six, and he's got to pay three, so he gets income of three. Oops. All right. So there's his three. All right, next is the expansion phase. Nobody has a tile to add to the board, so we go on to the conscription phase. And uh, yellow says, yeah, he'll buy one conscription card. Add it to his hand, an event. Let's see what his hand size is. He's at four. He's not going to buy another one. Red seems to have plenty of money, so he's going to buy one. 
another one. If your army enters a territory without an opponent's troop, that territory becomes part of your domain. He could buy another one, but he's not going to. And Blue says he's not going to buy one. Okay, we're into the mobilization phase, deploy step. Um, Yellow does have this crossbowman, which he wants to deploy um, with. He wants to deploy this company with his uh, current troop too. And remember, he can do that. You can either deploy it into an empty troop in a city, or you can deploy it into a troop that contains a uh, captain of fortune and at least one other company. So he's going to deploy that crossbowman with his uh, troop two, and that costs him one coin to deploy that. Okay, Red, he wants to deploy his Captain of Fortune, and he can deploy that with uh, this heavy, heavy cavalry because they're in his city um, here. Um, so he's deploying that, um, and he can deploy a Captain of Fortune with a into a troop with a um, company, so he's doing that. That costs him one. And blue is going to deploy uh, Francesco, blah, 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 Captain of Fortune. Um, it's going to cost him two. He's going to deploy that into Troop 2. That costs him two. And he does have this Swordsman he could deploy, deploy also either in with him or he could form another troop. But he's kind of getting worried about his... <clears throat> maintenance cost because he doesn't have very much money so uh, I think that's all he's gonna do all right regroup phase we don't need to worry about that because um, nobody's got their armies in the same territory to exchange or anything so finally we go to the troop phase where we can move so yellow does want to move now he's got <clears throat> His lowest movement is this crossbowman, which can only move two, um, so they have to go with that. They can't go with the three, you go with the lowest. But he does have the plus two from his uh, Captain of Fortune, so he can move up to four. And he wants to get this other papal territory, and it only costs one to move in there. So he's going to move there. And if he ends his movement here, because there's no enemy armies here, he can discard this enemy domain marker and get one victory point for each one he uh, removes. So he'll get one victory point for that. And that just goes back to the blue player. And that's all the moves he's going to do. Okay, now red, because uh, he just had a company marker, we actually have to replace his troop a company marker with an army marker now since he put a captain of fortune there so I need to find his two uh, marker and replace it his two company marker with the two army marker and now uh, let's see he's gonna move he's got a movement of three no uh, bonus for captain of fortune so he can move up to three so uh, this costs him one to move and two to move and he's going to end his movement there and because uh, there's no enemy armies there he can remove that and he gets one victory point so it's kind of uh, you probably want to get armies out there and defend your areas that you're taking otherwise it doesn't do you a lot of good okay and finally blue he can move if he wants to he's got to, oh we forgot to replace his uh, company marker with a uh, um, army marker also so we need to do that there's his number two um, army marker since he added a captain of fortune 
And he's got a movement of 3 plus 1, so he can move 4. So, he's going to move uh, 2. That costs 2. He could go there and take that, get in a battle with that guy. And we could just show a battle and then probably wrap it up. Um, don't really have a lot of cards, but let's go ahead and do it. So he can move one more in there, and now we immediately have a battle. All right, so each player will put one of these domain, I mean, one of these battle cards on top of their player mat. Okay, and then each player will put their captain of fortune in this space, and then they would put their cards. He's he's just only got the one, so it's just going to go in this space. You would put them face down um, so your opponent doesn't know what you're playing there, but again, it doesn't matter. He's only got one card. And the yellow player will put his captain of fortune. I don't really have it. Let me scoop these cards out of the way just for now. And then he'll put his crossbowman there and a spearman there. That's all he has. And if you had more... And again, you would put them face down at first until both players say they're ready, and then you flip them up at the same time. But I'm playing by myself, so it doesn't matter. I know uh, what I've put. Okay, and then the first assault is always a ranged assault. So he has no ranged, um, and he has no bonus range. And neither one of them has a domain marker in here, so no bonuses would take place and even if they did there's no bonus for ranged anyway so he has zero ranged this guy has three for his crossbowman plus one bonus for his captain of fortune and none for his spearman so four so he's going to do four damage to the other guy and the other guy's going to do none to him his resistance is four um, which would normally kill him but once per battle, not just per assault, but per battle, he can use uh, either, if he if this was in his domain, um, he could use a defense resistance bonus there, which there is none. But his, his uh, Captain of Fortune does have resistance of two, so he can use that, again, once per battle. So that can absorb two of it, so he's going to get two wounds. So we'll put that on the card. Okay, and then now we go to the uh, second assault, which is melee. So he gets three. Uh, this guy gives no bonus, so just a total of three. And it's a little too late, but the yellow did have this card where he could have played during a battle involving your army. The opponent cannot use the modifiers of his Captain of Fortune if you pay Florins equal to his maintenance cost. So I could have paid two florins, and he wouldn't have been able to use that plus two resistance, and that would have just killed that guy, and he would have won the battle. But anyway, I didn't do that. I forgot to look at those cards. So again, uh, he has a melee of three against a melee of two. No bonus here. So he's going to do three damage to this guy. Um, he has a resistance of three. No bonus for... Uh, the captain of fortune so this guy's going to be defeated and uh, he's going to do two damage which is going to go ahead and finish I remember I can only use that resistance bonus once per battle so I can't use it again now so that's going to kill this guy this guy would be killed but uh, this guy would still have his spearmen surviving um, and his captain of fortune so his army would survive this guy's army would lose and this guy would get five points for defeating an army so he would get one two three four five and then uh, the swordsman would be discarded and this guy's captain of fortune would be out of the game and then these guys just go back. You just remove the battle boards. And these guys would go back to his troop. So he would just have the one spearman card now in this army. So that's it. And that one, you know, uh, 
that's how the game goes. So you can see it's actually the one game I played yesterday where I played by myself solo. It actually went pretty quick. Now I did something stupid and I'm doing it uh, again here. You can see I'm kind of moving my uh, armies out without leaving much defense. Just the one garrison back in my home city. So when I was playing yesterday... I did that and one player was moving his army out here and the other player just came over with his army and defeated that guy's city and ended up winning the game pretty quickly. But anyway, that's the ways you can win, either defeat the enemies and take over the enemy city or whoever gets 30 points. So that's it. That's Ventura. Um, now, since I've had two plays of it and I guess a little bit of a play here during my demo, um, I actually kind of like it. Um, I'm sure, you know, as I've mentioned, the strategies I'm doing so far are not very good, but with several plays, I'm sure you could figure out what's a pretty good strategy or, you know, what you could do better. Obviously, I'm not playing optimally here. Um, but again, uh, um, I think it seems like a pretty fun game. I don't know uh, why it didn't do better than what it did and why it was always on sale um, when it first came out. Or, I'm sure it wasn't on sale when it first came out, but it wasn't long. I think it came out in 2011. I'm not sure when I bought it. Like I said, my one play of it um, up until now was back in 2015. So, I'm not sure exactly when I bought it, but I know I bought it on a sale for like $25. So, I don't know, maybe somebody that's played it quite a few times knows some faults with it maybe there's some certain strategy that always wins or something i don't know but i actually think it uh kind of fun and i'd, I'd like to play it again with uh, several players um like i said it plays up to four so that's it uh, i hope you i gave you a good idea of how it plays and uh, thanks for wa watching i hope you enjoyed it